Welcome to the Concentric Home Solution Woodworking Channel. My name is Michael St. Amy. If you happen to like this video, I would like to invite you to become a subscriber, hit the bell notification, leave a comment and a like. If you are a regular subscriber, I do appreciate you. In this video, I will be going over some products that I have here to include I know last week we spoke about me getting the TSO parallel guides, but I do have one already by another manufacturer by the name of Seneca Woodworking. And also we're gonna be talking about these little fellas. I showed them in a previous video, but I never really, you know, spoke on them. And I think they're very interesting and I think they're worthwhile. They're plug cutters. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, here we are. Am I still gonna get a TSO guides? Yes. Uh, mainly because of the channel. So I can give you guys another, you know, product to consider and the TSO may end up being significantly better than this for all I know. But I was thinking about this the other day. I've actually had no problem with these ones that I have and I rarely ever use them. So it got me into thinking, do I want to get another set that I'm probably going to rarely use also? I don't know if I ever stated this before. Although these tools are very accurate. Train passing. The way I use them, accuracy is not a big thing for me when using them. In other words, I'm using them as a rough dimensioning tools. Again, these tools are very accurate. I've calibrated these and it gives me the sizes and it does what it's supposed to do. But its accuracy is not the reason why I purchased it. I, I want it to be close coming off of my breaking down, but it doesn't have to be perfect because everything I produce during the breaking down stage is rough. And I do that with everything. I, I don't ever try to go from one dimension to another dimension in one go. From, especially when you're working with rough dimensional lumber, that's actually a bad idea. You have to give the wood a time to acclimate when you do something drastic to it, like milling. So working off of that same type of habit, I do that with mostly everything. I try to get close to a dimension and but not too close. Break it down and then when I have an easy to work with, easy to handle workpiece, then I try to achieve the perfect, the quote unquote perfect cut. So in the case of parallel guides, I will be starting with a four by eight sheet. And I think I've mentioned this before, the American style table saw is not designed or was never intended to be used for processing four by eight sheets, no matter what anyone tells you. It, it was never designed to do that. And it's actually, in my opinion, very unsafe to do so. So the track saw with the parallel guides, and to be honest with you, if I'm gonna be honest with myself, you don't even really need parallel guides for the way I do it. Okay, even, measuring off and marking off of the four by eight sheet and using uh, a, a, a real guide and a track saw would do what I needed to do. But still again, me being me, I, I rather use these. So technically the way I come off of the rough sheet, most people would be able to, you know, make that to a, 
uh, exact dimension and work with it off of that, but that's not my intention. It's gonna be oversized, size, but it's gonna be square. Okay, Squ it being square is just a side effect of using these tools. That's all it is for me. So with that said, I, I thought to myself, maybe I should put the TSO on the back burner because the Seneca works very well. And the money I would have put into the TSO right now, I could use it for something else that would actually add immediate value to my, um, my work process. And right now I'm toying with the idea of getting one of those vacuum hold down type apparatuses. Uh, I've been looking at the one from the kit that they sell. I think it's called Joe Woodworker. I've been looking at that for years. They sell it in a kit and you can use it with a bag for vacuum um, pressing veneer and so forth but you could also use it for clamping. And I could end up producing a situation that would give me the capabilities of, you know, Festool sells one, but at a fraction of the price. So that's my line of thinking. So with that said, this is extremely well built. This is the actual product. These are actually the products produced by Seneca Woodworking. Is this, aluminum piece made up out of a solid piece of aluminum and then it's anodized in black. Very well made. And the stop that goes with it. The only qualm I have with the stop, and that's why you see this on here, I was thinking that it would be great if Seneca themselves or somebody else, a third party, could take some cues from this woodpecker flip down. It works perfectly with this Seneca track. I mean, sorry, with this Inqua track. The Seneca system uses the Inqua track, but it's too short. If it could be as long as this, this would be perfect flip stop for this. So anybody out there with a 3D printer or, you know, Lady Woodpecker or Seneca himself, that would be a very good idea for this product. So it will give you flip stops. So that's just something I was just toying with. I don't have a 3D printer at this time. So it's not something that I could do myself. But I think this would be a great idea. If you want repeatability and you want multiple stops. So it just slips over the, the Seneca track. There we go. Get a nut line up. Come on. There it goes. And you know, it just stops all the way to the end. You hold it down and you tighten this knob. I did a little hack. You can calibrate it. I calibrated using a, a piece of stock and holding it flush to the end of the rail track. We'll go through all of that in a second. And then using the um, INCRA um, measuring system, which is a sliding system. It does have, I like it a lot, but it does have one floor. It can move around on you. I'll give you a little heads up, a little hack. Once you get it set up the way you want it, what I did is I drop a little bit of CA glue and use the, the activator. Same thing on the end and it's there. So it's something I could peel off if I ever had to move it, but Per this calibration is there. And I did the same thing on both of them. So now I no longer have the problem of it slipping around. So that's a little you know, pro tip um, for anyone that decide to get this. And this, by the way, I can recommend. It does work. And it is it does what it's supposed to do. Oh, it came with a 36, but I intend on purchasing a 48 inch track which will allow me to get um, into the center of a four by eight sheet along the eight foot dimension. There's also an 18 inch track you can get for this too. 
So, put this other stuff aside for now. And I'm gonna show you how it attaches to a track. We're gonna use a short track for the demo. Oh geez, I just noticed something. I didn't bring out my Allen key. Give me one second. I'm gonna need an Allen wrench. It's made by an American company. So, should be an American Allen key size. If I remember right, it came with one, but I don't have it, obviously. I don't, I mean, I probably do have it, but it's somewhere. <laughs> so these things, you know, it has the same similar nut and it, and it has a little, it has the same similar, I think it's a quarter inch nut. And it has a little ledge there for registration. And it just slips in. This is the problem with the long ones. You need space. It just slips in. To your track. Just like that. See? And then you set it whatever you want to set it. I normally, you could register to the back or you could register to the front. You just stick to one side. I like to pull it back. Knock this up. Knock that up. Just remember, whichever way you decide to register it, stick to that. It's pretty close, but after you calibrate it, you want to do the same thing each time if you do it forward or put it back. That would be my recommendation to you. But you see the stop right there? I could use my um, workbench as a mock plywood or sheet good I wanted to break down. And everything clears. I got it when it originally came out and it was a, a little problem. It was a little bit different. It was, it was in shape like a T. It was one big block and this was thicker and it used to rub against the saw. And I called up the gentleman and I let him know about it. And that's when he came out with his new version and he sent it to me. And I still have the old one. He didn't even require me to send back the old one. I mean, I don't use them because it doesn't work for me, but he sent out a new one. So that gives you an idea of his character. But this one clears it perfectly. You can see that. And whatever measurement you have it set it to, after you have it calibrated, you can have repeat cuts. I can cut that, go again, cut, go again, until you have no more plywood. To cut <laughs> or go to the next sheet or what the case may be and whatever you do you want to cut a straight edge and register off a straight edge and your track is going to create a parallel straight edge to that edge and that's the whole concept again it does work and i do like it the only thing that i kind of have an issue with not a big issue for me, but might be an issue for others. If you want this to be a main tool for you for, let's say, making cabinet sides or whatever the case may be, you may not have a table saw or your table saw might be too small and you want to use a real saw to do it and you want to have a system where you could have it repeatable, the flips is a must in my opinion. Or else, each time, you're going to have to be setting these. And when you're trying to do precision work, if you're going to be using it in that way, you don't want to be 
trying to make these match every time. You don't want to be using, I know you could use a tape measure and all of that, but once again, when you're doing precision, the less reset you have to do is the less error is going to creep into your work. So I like the idea of I set it up once, calibrate it once, and I could flip it out of the way. So if I'm doing multiple size, I could have one set up for one size, size, set it to it, cut. If I have to go to another side, size, sorry, another size, I flip, flip it down, put it in, and there's no moving around to introduce or for error to creep in. I hope that made sense. So that's that. Oh, what am I doing here? <laughs> But that's neat too. The fact that this could come off and you could put different size, sizes. And the reverse is the same. Just, you know, we're going backwards now. We're removing. And you remove it. Very well built. And yes, it's Seneca Woodworking, made in the US. Small company. I think it's just the one gentleman. He's a proud machinist, by the way. I'm gonna lay off that. I'm gonna leave you all alone. I, I know there's a lot of us now that are very sensitive. <laughs> So that aside, the next thing I have for you today is, oh, in case I didn't mention it and in case it wasn't obvious, I'm using it with a small rail, but of course you can use it with any length rail. So if I was doing a four by eight sheet, of course I would use a much longer rail. These are little gems. I like them a lot. Normally, if you want to use plugs, or you want to use, um, yeah, you want to create plugs, you got to do it on a drill press. You can't do it on a drill, because normally a plug doesn't have a pilot, and you try to drill, it wants to walk. There's a way you can do it, but you have to have a lot of skill to do it. And it's kind of ridiculous. It's better to do it on a drill press. But if you want to make plugs out in the field, this is the best way I've seen. This is a 3 8 plug cutter. It has a center that is, I guess in turning, they call it a live center. I think that's what they call it. But what this center does, it pushes in and it also spins. But what it does, it allows you to start the hole and keep the hole straight so this could do its job. Okay? Why would you want to use a plug? Um, in a previous video, I mentioned that one of the simplest woodworking joinery and still qualify you as being a woodworker, in my opinion, is a butt joint. And one of the strongest ways I know you can create a, a, a butt joint is by screws, using screws. Everything walking away from me today. So using screws such as this, I could assemble a project with this. These are self um, sinking um, screws, but you know, I will still, depending on what I'm doing, I'll still create a plug if I wanted to really hide it. So the idea is this. And Normally, you want to use a high-speed drill. You want something with a lot of RPMs when, when you're drilling stuff like this, but this should be good enough for today. So what are we going to do? Let's do a 3 8 
in a scrap piece of poplar that I have here. And these bits work perfectly with my M8. It's made by Milwaukee. I don't want to drill into my, um, my work table. So let me grab another scrap. Here we go. And let's say now. Okay. I created this hole. All right, as you can see right here. And I put a screw in it. Yeah, let's kind of do a real type demonstration. So I put a screw in it. Oh, this has a box head. Robinson. Let's say I put a screw in it, okay? Okay. Now here's the problem. My project now looks kind of ugly because I have this joinery all over the place that is with these little silver head and a hole. So you want to hide that, you want to mask that, and you want it to blend in with the rest of your work. So you can use a plug cutter. Now the hole I just drilled was a 3 8 hole, I think. Yeah, 3 8 hole. And this is a 3 8 plug cutter. And you can get it. It came in a set of three. It starts with 5 16 and the third one is a half inch. Now, what I could do is find a scrap piece of wood that have a similar grain to the area that I'm trying to plug. Let's say, you see this veining that's running through there? Let's say I, I pick like right here on another piece of wood, not on your project, right? That looks similar to that. I put that there like this. and it cut my plug. Now, to get the plug out, we're gonna be doing a lot of this, guys, wear a dust mask. I'm just doing a quick demonstration. Even to that, I normally would have worn a dust mask, but just to let you know, it's gonna produce a lot of dust. And you pop it out. There's your little plug. <clears throat> and you use glue, of course. After the glue is dry, you get to sand it or, you know, use a chisel or a plane or whatever to flush it. And you basically get a camouflage or nearly camouflage. Um, work piece when you're done. So that would be a way to hide a screw head and doing it with a cordless or even a corded drill without the use of a drill press, especially in the field. So I think it's neat. I, I always have a set on me. I always have this set on me. I rarely ever do that type of joinery, but when I do, these are available to me, and they're not overly exp expensive, is by a company called, uh, I think it's Montana Tool Company, and is a US-based manufacturer, if I understand. I think it's actually made in the United States. But I might, I might be wrong. I'll leave the information in the description, but it's, the company itself is out of the United States. I think it's manufactured here, but I'm not 100% sure.
but very neat. Again, three sizes, five sixteenths, three eighths and a half. And you can make your own plugs without the use of a drill press. Then I don't know if I ever, I think I mentioned these screws one time. These are very interesting screws. It's made by, it's sold by a company. I, I don't think they make it. It's sold by a company called Quick Screw. I think that's his name of the company. Yes, Quick Screws. And what I like about this screw, it was, this was not an intended part of the video, but hey, who doesn't like a bonus? <laughs> what I like about this screw is if you pay attention to the design, it's different. It, it cuts in a different direction near the top. So it doesn't pull up um, fibers. And the underside of the head also cuts. So it creates, of a, it creates a countersink. Not the perfect countersink, but on a pinch, if you're putting something together like carcasses or something that's gonna be covered up, it saves you a step, or it could save you a step in having to create countersink holes. It's also self-piloting. So I'm gonna give you a little demonstration. Never get too close to the edge. It's just gonna split it out unless it's something that is that's pre-drilled. Remember that. Oh, not a good spot. It went into a pocket, so it's not gonna do. Uh, it might do it, but let's give it its best chance to succeed. Best opportunity. Okay, find some place that's clear. Like right here. See, this is in your field of view. Yep. If I was going into something else, it probably would do it better. doesn't really have anything else to grab to continue to continue pulling but if you see it as it is right now it's actually below the surface uh you hear me talking to myself a little bit like i'm crazy is because i don't have enough wood to make this thing continue to pull so there's no more thread left on the upper part of the shaft for it to continue to pull in i hope you understand that that's kind of how a screw works it has to be able to be pulled into it but anyway it it would kind of sink deeper but because matter of fact let's do this do it on the edge See that? Hope you can see that. How deep it is underneath there. And even something like, you see how clean it is on the top too? Even something like this, you could um, plug. I don't know if I have a size for that. The 516 might work, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll have to check the size of that head. But that's a little cool feature of that um, screw. And I use those screws for, I use those screws for assembly. Hope you can see that. I'll put it down here. Hope you can see it, it's kind of sink. And let me see if I have the information on it. Where is it? Oh, here it is. This particular one is a number eight. 
is one and three quarters inch. It has a square drive head. It has a funnel head. That's what creates the um, countersink. It has coarse threads. Is a type 17 point and is zinc plated. So if you wanted to get these screws, you will know what it made by quick screws. And also I think this is the, um, the part number is a 15,459 is the, is a part number. And this particular one came in a box of a thousand. So if you want to inquire about it, that's the information. That's it. Off the top again, we might be postponing the TSO purchase for the um, parallel rip guides because I, I do have a system already that works. Although I like the TSO one and I like to get it into the shop, even if for nothing else, um, to have something to review, to compare and contrast against this. But for now, you know, being someone that don't have an infinite budget, so I have to see how, you know, I have to be careful of how I allocate money. Um, basically, I want to have the maximum bang for my money. Uh, I think it would be better for me right now to put that money into something else. So we're still going to get bring the TSO in for t testing, but I'm going to hold off on it for a little bit. And as far as the review on the Synchra, it, it works and it's accurate. And so much so is the reason why I'm holding off on a TSO. The only thing that this T, the TSO has up on this, a leg up on this, as far as I'm concerned, is the flip stops. And if you're not familiar to the, with these, you just got introduced to another or a new um, tool you can add to your kit. And it's a plug cutter where you don't need a drill press. You can use a cordless or corded drill and you could freehand cut plugs. Company again, Montana, like the um, state. Tool come and actually I think that's where they're based out of. Um, plug cutters. Comes in 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths and a half. As usual, I leave you with, have a good day and be safe in the shop. If you enjoyed this video, and you would like to be notified when new content is dropped on this channel, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and drop a comment down below.